Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are going over this firearm right here. This is the Foxtrot mic FM9B and the B designation there standing for Brownells. So Brownells has an exclusive line of Foxtrot mic 9mm ARs and this is one of them. This one here has a 5 inch barrel. They also make one with a 4 inch barrel and then they make a 10 inch barrel model version. Uh, but before we sort of like walk through the gun piece by piece let's head out to the range and see what kind of accuracy you can expect out of a short little package like this we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get here with this little pistol setup we got the eotech xps2 and 3x magnifier on there uh, out front on the gun is the surefire rider ti now that can barely barely doesn't touch the rail it is recessed in there i have my suspicions that as it recoils it actually is hitting the rail just because of barrel harmonics i have no proof of that uh so whether or not it'll affect ammo or accuracy rather we'll see never know uh we got three loads here only one of them is really kind of like a defensive match grade load but just to give you guys a sample of what you could expect with, uh, some different stuff we have some red army standard steel case stuff up first i think these days more people are shooting steel case than really ever uh, so we're going to see how it does target is downrange at 50 yards for folks who are new here i shoot pistols uh accuracy tests at 50 yards because the wind really pushes these nine mils around and uh that's pretty much it we got some wind not too bad right now who knows so out here it kicks up quick so we'll see how it does That's certainly not the greatest group, but hey, it's not atrocious. <laughs> All right, so up next, guys, we have some Minuteman munitions, 115 grain, a uh, total metal jacket. Uh, they are the 9mm ammo sponsor here on the channel, so shout out to them. We appreciate it all the time, but especially in these times. So up next is the uh, Federal HST. This is a 124 grain plus P, so got a little more kick to it. And uh, we'll see how it likes that one. Let's go check them out. Of course, first up there, we had that Red Army Standard. And uh, the group there is just over four inches four and a half inches on that one then we had our minute man wasn't particularly a fan of that either unfortunately on that one geez we're at we're at six inches on that one um but then we tightened it up here for sure with those uh, hsts and uh we we're right at just under two inches on that one so we're about one and three quarters center to center um, so just over a three moa group there obviously because again we're at 50 yards you gotta double it um, not terrible at all like anything else guys you just gotta find what your gun likes and uh of these three no doubt preferred the hsts ran a couple if we ran a couple other loads rather uh we could probably tighten that up but that's what we tested today and the review goes on. Before I get into the details of the pistol, I want to address the accuracy that you guys just saw. I believe I mentioned that I thought the Surefire can was causing some barrel harmonic issues because this is the third FM9 upper I have. The other two shoot really well, better than what you guys just saw out there. Although that accuracy out there is certainly fine for practical use, but they do shoot better. And so I removed the Surefire can right after shooting that and just shot it with no muzzle device on there, which probably isn't recommended because the barrel stops back here. But regardless, uh, we did do that and the Minuteman group literally shrunk in half. So no doubt about it, uh, that Surefire can actually impacting the inner rail there did make a difference in barrel harmonics. But again, practically speaking, it just shot fine anyway. But anyway. Moving on to the actual firearm as it ships. So it ships with uh, this flash can or blast deflector, whatever you want to call it out there on the front. And it's designed of course, to push the noise and the flash forward, which is great outdoors for sure. Um, but inside of a house, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Um, so there is that. Um, it is not threaded half by 28th, which I wish it was. That is gonna be one of my cons on there. Uh, it's 
A lot of companies don't thread their nine millimeter barrels half by 28, and the reason they don't do it is because the standard AR-15 muzzle devices out there uh, don't have a 30 cal or nine millimeter bore to them. So if you put like an AR-15 A2 birdcage flash hider on there, and tried to fire it, the nine millimeter round wouldn't be able to go through and your gun would blow up. So I get why they do it for a safety reason, but there's so many suppressors and other muzzle devices out there um, that work with it and do have the right bore. So there's that. So unfortunately we had to use an adapter with the Surefire can um, just to make it work because that one has a half by 28 fixed barrel insert in there. But anyway, that's, that's my uh, soapbox. I'll get off it for now. Uh, continuing on back there, we do have our M-Lock rail and it does have the M-Lock slots all the way around. So it is at three, six and nine o'clock positions as well as the intermediate positions. I have a fly over here buzzing me anyway. Um, and one thing that's nice that FM uh, does with their rail and their upper receiver is that they make a little dovetail mount uh, interface rather right up top. So, I mean, there's no way this thing can go left or right in any sort of way. It's one of the more solid designs out there. And honestly, uh, in terms of like keeping a laser zeroed or something like that, it's, it's one of the better ones on the market period. It's just a really, really solid design. And then down here where these bolts are, that prevents it from moving forward at all as well. So in terms of durability of a handguard, again, one of the better ones out there. It's not T-marked for what it's worth, um, but I don't think a lot of guys out there with AR9s are really looking for, you know, their mil spec markings on there. Moving back to the upper and lower receiver, we will take our fun stick out of there, verify that we are clear here. And we definitely should be. And we're going to go ahead and disassemble it to get into the parts features of it. Disassemble is just like any standard AR-15 out there. Uh, and it is tight, I will tell you that for sure. And that front pin sometimes doesn't want to come out like right now. So that's a good thing though for those of you guys. I know a lot of you guys really like tight fit. I'm a fan of it. It's not a critical indicator for me, but hey, it is what it is. We do have our shell deflector here. Uh, obviously, there's no port cover or anything like that on there, but the shell deflector is there to kick the brass forward. So that way, if you're left-handed, you're firing one of these, you're not getting pelted with brass in the face. So that certainly is a good thing. Upper receiver here is pretty unique to FM. I know it will work with some other lowers out there. I know CMT for sure. And I know there are a list over on Foxtrot Mike's website. So just check it out if you want to see about compatibility. I know it works with a lot of them, just not everyone out there. And you can see in the barrel there, we have that feed ramp, which is all the way around there, which is something that's cool that a lot of AR9s do. Um, so that way uh, the barrel doesn't need to have a uh, indexing pin. You can just be in there and regardless of how it's coming in at whatever angle, um, it's gonna feed right in there. And one thing that's cool about the FM guns too is their feed angle is really, really high. So what that does, way the bolts designed is that basically the rounds just being pushed straight in which is one of the things that makes them very very reliable um, so there is that moving on to our charging handle it is a standard mil spec affair nothing at all fancy to write home about but it works absolutely just fine and our bolt has this patent pending marking on there again because some of the geometry is different than what you're going to see on other AR9 style bolt, but we have good staking there on the gas key. It is nitrided and uh, we do have our weight here in the back. So it's held in by this roll pin. Um, I would imagine you can probably buy different weights that will swap in and out of there like you can with CMMG. I haven't seen that on the market, but the fact that it's only held in by a roll pin kind of tells me more than likely not you can. It's a tungsten weight in there, making it very heavy because that, this gun is a blowback gun, meaning that the only thing, you know, making this cycle is the actual force coming back on it after firing. There's no gas system or anything like that. So you need to have a heavy uh, bolt so that way the timing is correct and basically it operates safely. Um, continuing on to our lower receiver, there's some cool things going on here that Foxtrot Mike does. One of them is going to be their mag release. It's one of the better ones out there on the market, in my opinion. It's large and the way it pivots right here makes it very easy to strip a mag out if you need to, should you get a double feed or something like that. Uh, it just gives you a lot of leverage on there uh, to be able to rip it out. And you guys can see there what I was talking about with the actual feed angle. It sits up there really high, so that helps with reliability for sure. Has a very generously flared magwell, which I love. Anybody who's watched the channel here knows that. I'm a big fan of the flared magwells. 
and it does have a last round bolt hold open. I'm not sure if you guys can tell right now, but this piece right here that's coming up is what is actually gonna lock your bolt open because it is connected via this steel bar right here. And that pushes it up when the last round comes up and the follower hits it, pushing it up, holding the bolt back. And it has locked back reliably every single time with this gun. Our trigger on this particular model is a mil spec affair. Nothing fancy, left side only, selector lever. And of course you could change it out if you wanted to. Um, but this one breaks really, I would say on the light side of mil spec triggers and the surface area, I'm just looking at it right now in there, basically where your sear disengagement is, is polished. And that's probably why it feels a little bit lighter than your standard mil spec affair. Um, so just one of the little touches that goes into it. Our, another one of the little touches that goes into it is our buffer detent here. So with a AR9 for folks who don't know, Again, like I was saying, you need to have a heavy bolt. You also wanna have a heavy buffer. So for the exact same reasons, right? You just wanna control the speed at, at which everything is cycling on it. So one of the things, if you look around at like AR9s about 10 years ago, when they were first starting to become somewhat popular, two things were breaking on them constantly. Bolt catch, number one, and then this guy here, which is our detent pin. And the reason is, obviously it's going back with more force than you typically would have with some sort of gas system. Additionally, that, that heavy weight there is gonna come forward with more force because of the added mass, right? So these things were shearing left and right. Well, they beefed that one up and added, uh, I guess, uh, more steel in there in the vertical plane, as you guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see that I'm rolling in a photo or something like that, but it does have a pistol weight buffer on there, which again is bigger and heavier than what you're gonna have there with a standard AR-15 for the reasons we just mentioned. Receiver extension there is a 7075 T6 Affair. It's a six position um, receiver extension. One thing that is also gonna be a con on this, my personal opinion, is that it does not have any type of staking there on the castle nut. However, it is held in place with a high temp thread locker. Some folks like that, some folks don't. I'll let you guys debate it down below in the comment section. You guys do you. And then we have our Mission First Tactical brace on here. It is adjustable, so you adjust it with this screw here, which lines up here, of course, with the little holes which are in your receiver extension. So it's not like a quick, quickly adjusting brace, but you can adjust it to all of the different positions there. And we have our sling attachment points here in these three slots. And then we have a QD sling attachment point here, both on the right as well as the left side. At this point in the video, we've hit the important points that I wanted to get to. A couple things to mention before we close it out. Number one, like I said, this is a Brownells exclusive gun and Brownells did send this out to me for the review. Um, just full disclosure on that one. Uh, price point on this, as of right now when I'm filming this video, depending on the model you're looking at, the actual retail price is 650 to I think 679, depending on the barrel length that you want. And um, in terms of discount codes and things like that, check out the video description for a link and discount codes. And right now they're also offering a gift card with it as well. But if you're watching this in you know, weeks from now, that may not be the case. But if you're watching it right when it comes out, you do get to take advantage of that gift card and it's gonna bring it under, under $600 rather, I should say, which certainly is a good thing. Pays to be a subscriber here. So if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Reliability on this guy, we had just over rather 800 rounds through this, vast majority of them being munitions. We had one malfunction, which was a failure to fire. Um, the primer was ignited, it didn't go off. I don't know why, that was with PMC ammo, just for what it's worth. It's hard to say if it was the gun or the ammo, I don't know. Everything else fed 100% reliably, regardless of any type of magazine we use. We use ETS magazines, MN2 magazines, Glock magazines, Magpul magazines, and all of them fed 100% just fine. We just had that one PMC round that didn't ignite can't really say why, I have no idea. Um, but reliability, very, very good in that regard. And like I said, all of my FM guns run well. So uh, it's, that's what I would expect if you're going to actually purchase one of these. Um, what do I think of it overall? Well, I like it. Um, the few things I would change that I said, of course, I would stake the castle nut, it's my personal preference. And then I would, if I was gonna use it for defense, and I wasn't gonna use a suppressor, like I know a lot of you guys don't use suppressors just for a myriad of reasons, and I totally get it. I personally, me personally, I would put a flash header on there rather than this um, you know, blast can or flash can, whatever you wanna call it. 
how everybody uses different names. Uh, reason for that is it's gonna reduce flash and it's also gonna reduce any type of concussion should you use it inside of a house. Outside of a house, these things do really well. Inside of a house, eh, not the greatest in my opinion. That's just me, that's my two cents. Another thing that I think we need to discuss here, both with the four and the five inch models, is you want to have some sort of indexing point um, because it's very easy to get your hand out there in front of that muzzle and kind of take off a chunk of your finger which we don't want to do that's why we have this little hand stop here that i put on there and i do recommend having something to index on for that reason you just with these short barrel guns it's just it's a concern and believe me if you do a google search you'll see a lot of guys that turn their uh, fingers into hamburger that didn't need to if they just took the proper um, you know, safety uh, thoughts and planning into account. So there is that. Uh, this is the first time I've used this Mission First Tactical Brace. Um, when you compare it to like an SB Tactical Brace or something like that, obviously there's less material on there. Um, it's a little bit less comfortable, but really, I mean, you're still talking about a gun that has minimal recoil at all. It's not a thumper in any regard. So it's perfectly comfortable in my opinion for the average person out there. I don't really think there's going to be any complaints on it. And uh, again, it has a lot of pros, that large trigger guard. We have the MFT grip here, which I do like as well, and large magwell. The bolt hold open system works well. There's a lot of AR9s out there that don't have any bolt hold, op hold open capability, so that is a pro for it for sure. Um, all in all, it's a good gun, and price-wise, I think it's a good value, especially in today's market, 2021. Guns are selling at a premium, and uh, these guns give you a lot of value for the money, in my opinion. So, um, you know, I could get into the pistol caliber carbines and why they're even a thing, and we could debate that, but maybe another day. I do have a video, though, where I cover the best gun for home defense, and pistol caliber carbines or pistol caliber pistols uh, are in the discussion if you want to check it out and see the pros and cons of those things. So there is that. Um, like I said earlier, if you aren't subscribed, please go ahead and hit subscribe. And we also have channel emails. The reason is folks are being unsubscribed from the channel for whatever reason. And uh, also, even if you're subscribed, YouTube may not be showing you my videos. So we have several different video or uh, email systems. Uh, the one that's here on your screen right now that will, if you sign up for it over there, will send out one or two emails a month, basically just all the videos since the last email went out. So that way there's not a giant social media network censoring your eyes from my content. Uh, then we have an email for daily deals when things go on sale or they have like a $75 off coupon like they do now. I send that out in the daily deals email so that way you guys can take advantage of it and save yourself some money. And then additionally, if you want a, to ask a question, comment, those sorts of things, you can always do so down below. But you can also do it over here at my other social media platforms right now. As of right now, again, 2021, mid 21, the ones that people are actually seeing the most of what I post are over at Power and Telegram, especially Telegram. Telegram has been phenomenal in terms of not censoring anything and actually letting people who follow me see my posts. So there is that. And uh, we also, I almost forgot, have our videos over at the Warrior Poet Society Network. Uh, my videos over there are free and ad free, I should also add. Uh, but if you wanna sign up for the premium content, which is legitimately really, really good TV quality stuff, uh, there's a 10% discount code down in the video description for you guys to do that. So that's it, that's the end of my spiel, it's the end of my rant. And I appreciate everybody watching up until the end, because very few of you do. So thank you for that. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.